Hi, and welcome to the Belonging Project with today's global conversation. The Belonging Project has the purpose to share real life story and powerful conversation that will inspire you and give you some practical strategies to anyone that is on the path of finding their true belonging, be it in society, in life, or as a leader. This conversation today is exactly what it needs to be at this moment in time. We've asked our guest to join us by video to allow us to create a deeper, authentic connection. Our rules, number one, nobody gets to be right or wrong. Number two, emotions are always welcome. Number three, come as you are. Everything is included here. Number four, everybody gets to be vulnerable. We love talking about your wins and successes, but also we love talking about maybe failures and challenges. And today our guest at the Belonging Project is Viviana Cremazzi. Viviana is a social entrepreneur, founder of Global Mindset Development. With GMD, she offers training and service and intercultural management, cultural and diversity inclusion, and cultural relocation support. Viviana is a senior lecturer in equality at place of work, gender and social policy and cultural intelligence at the University of Malta, and consultant and trainer in intercultural and communication for Institute for Education. She holds a PhD in sociology of immigration and an MA in intercultural and interreligious conflicts management. Her bio doesn't fin finish here. She has a lot of more than that. And we can't wait to hear from her. And uh, Viviana, thank you so much for being here today. We are so thrilled to have you as our guest sharing your story, your experience, and your journey toward belonging. In order to get started, I would like you to share with us what's your story. So thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea and Fiorenza, for having me. It's really an honor to be here and to like support your project. So when I was thinking to like this question about my story, especially in the last days, I I thought about like my two lives, let's say. There is one life that was before moving to Malta. So I was born in Italy in a small town, small community. I had all my experience, my master, my PhD, I travel. And then in 2017, I moved to Malta. And let's say there, my second life started. And as many, <laughs> many things, in, in the dark moments, sometimes in dark moments, you find and, and you, you come up with like a different strategy, uh, a different like new resources and a new you. And this is what happened to me in Malta. So um, as you want like a story and this is a safe space. And I think it, this is really linked to the belonging and why I'm so, so in love with the island. And so like people make fun of me or you're working for the, the, the Maltese mm -hmm. Tourism Authority because I love the island. I always <laughs> like speak about the island. I think because, because I'm really grateful to the island for like giving me this, let's say, second opportunity in life because I had an emergency surgery in 2018 and it was something I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I had and so then I need like six month treatment. And I was alone, far from home, even if like close to Italy, but I was in another country, another health system, another language. And, but the support I found there was really incredible and and the people made me feel so welcome and supported and then like after the surgery i uh, it was also for me to like company decided to change their strategy so move to another country and so for me it was also time to decide what i'm gonna do i'm gonna stay in malta but i need to find a job or, or do something and i came back to all my experiences and my studies and I think the island gave me the opportunity, but I also, let's say, found my opportunity and I created Global Mindset Development with the aim of doing intercultural management, cultural diversity and diversity and inclusion, not only for 
the non-profit sector or like international organization as I was working before in Italy. So in a sense to work not only for with people already aware of like how important diversity can be and how uh, like it is important for also social cohesion, but to work with everyone. And so this is um, what I'm doing actually now in Malta. And because it's a small country also, but really international. So all the companies they have uh, people from all over the world working in, in the same company. And so it was something that they needed and something that I was able to offer. So this is a little bit of my story and my link to Malta, let's say. Wonderful. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Viviana, for, for sharing your story and um, your journey as well um, to Malta and in Malta. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. The next question um, that we wanted to ask you is what words come to mind when you hear the word belonging? So if, if I think to like the way I saw and I felt belonging a few, a few years ago, or maybe when I was a teenager, I was afraid of, of this word because for me it was also, it was linked to a kind of constraint so belonging to a specific group um, meant at that time to fit in some rules or fit in the norm. And I was always like a, a teenager or um, a woman that I think I had a strong identity and I was not like fit some of what were the, I was the norm, partially the norm, but I was not maybe always the norm that these groups uh, like wanted me to be. And so I think that if, if I had to think about the term, uh, I think that were, were my first memories and I was afraid of the world. But then um, I think like coming more to the present, um, I think that the place where I feel I belong, they're really places that make me feel welcome and, and where I can really be myself. So I don't have to fit any norm or be the norm, or I don't have to fit um, someone else's ideas of um, me, but I can be me uh, with all the identities that I have. So I would say welcoming and like safe space and also space where I can be free of being myself. Mm. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. And uh... In your experience, like uh, you lived in so many countries and even working with so many people, how was this experience when you travel abroad or working in the international environment? Where do you see this belonging or not belonging working internationally? Yeah, I, I think it is really a process of discovering and because then when you when you are abroad you become the Italian and or you become the Italian from the north or the Italian from the south so you actually have to face also your or the identity that someone else wants you to to show and I think the pandemic for me was really interesting and always with my partner we discuss about this sense of belonging because for me, I, I like grew up being, I'm a, a global citizen, so my place is the world. But actually during the pandemic, as the airport was closed, so for six months, I wasn't able to like go back to Italy. I felt a strong sense of belongings to my region and that specific province in my region that is like Barese, where there are the lakes. And, and so every time I, my friend were sending me a picture of like, um, our lakes or what they were seeing from, from the window, for me was, oh, I really felt, let's say, deeply to belong to this, to this place. And, and I think I saw it also in a different way. I, I gave it value that maybe before, it was, no, I'm, I don't want to come from a small community. Like I am from a small community, but then I'm, I'm living in the world, like the world is my, is my home. But no, I think that is also important. So it is important to recognize your root. So where you come from, and it, it can be a country, it can be a region, it can be a city, so that then you can really like interact with the others, but also you are strong of where you, where you come from and what you can also bring. And then of course, all the experience that you have then make you, um, so I was, you know, Andre, I was in Brazil last year and 
I really felt that I belong in Brazil because I don't know, I went there many times, my friends were make me feel at home. So for me, it's also something that deeply then you feel there are places where you feel at home more than another place. So you feel that belong there may be something in your characters that really like fit in, in those places. And but it's a journey of discovering. It is, it is. And I totally uh, resonate with what you were saying. And there is a especially when we live for so long abroad, there is that sense that in the beginning we want to change, like we need to fit in or we try to belong to that new place. But then after the year pass, you, you understand that this, and I love this quote I, I, I posted as well from Maya Angelou, that you belong to everywhere and anywhere. And at the same time, there is a part of you here that still from the place you were born and raised it, that you always be there. There is no question that you always be there. So it's, uh, it's interesting to see the, you know, the, the faces that we go through as well in this process. And there's something else as well that you've mentioned, Viviana, and that totally resonated with um, you know uh, what you said about how others see you and how others perceive or you know kind of assume your identity um, I've completely lived that so I was born and I grew up in 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 Paris to a very Italian family so like to me very early on it was yeah I'm a, I'm a global citizen and 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 that's it which also meant that I felt a bit you know in between right? Um, at the time, I didn't know about, you know, salt culture killed uh, kids and all that. Um, but in, in France, I was never the French. I was maybe a bit the Italian or just like, oh, uh, who are you again? Like, where are you from? Like, what's your name? Like, what's the story behind your name? Um, and then when I moved to London, um, I think when I'm, yeah, when I'm um, over like a drinks or, you know, like a, to a party or something, um, quite quickly, you can hear my French accent or, or even you're maybe hearing it now. Um, so people would just assume that I'm the French. Oh, you're the French. And so for the first time, I was the French. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it's also interesting how um, people that maybe I've, I've met online or just online. And so the first thing that they see is my name uh, before maybe having a conversation with me, they would say, oh, the Italian. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's, you know, it's just like, oh, wow. Like now I, you know, I have all those perceptions and yeah, it's, um, it's interesting to, you know, see that and, and, and leave to you that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And like before creating GMD, I'm still, I'm, I'm work a lot with second generations in Italy and, and the interesting thing is what you just mentioned. So then, and then in Italy, there is also the Italian citizenship part. So sometimes even if they are born in Italy, they are not Italian citizen or they have to wait till like 18 years old. So, um, but then when they go to Morocco for the, the holidays, the summer holidays, they are the Italian, but in Italy, they are the Moroccans. Mm -hmm. And so they don't feel they fit. And some of them, they, once they got the Italian citizenship, they decided to migrate. And so they moved to London or Paris. And what they found was in an international city, they could be whoever they were. So in London, they felt to be more, to belong more than in Italy or in Morocco, because it was a, for them a, a, a place and a space that was like welcoming all their diversity. So being Moroccan Italian or um, what they wanted to be. That's so true. When you have that international um, community, sometimes you have the first time to be whoever you want to be. Um, exactly. yeah. yeah. We had another question um, for you, Viviana. Um, it's about the different dimensions, maybe, or factors that you think are important to feel like you belong. Um, I think it's like something is what I mentioned before. So to belong, you need a place where you can be yourself. And, and so what I also do with my clients is to try to start with you. So what are the values of the company and what are the values of your employee? 
and they, they are the same, or maybe you have forget your own values and, and the values of your employee. And, and so we, we try to do all this process to see if we can really create this safe space where everyone can be what they want to be. And, and sometimes even for us that we work in diversity and inclusion, and maybe you have also found yourself in this, sometimes we want to create identities also where there are not identities. So sometimes I have this discussion with my clients because they want to create like groups, like support groups. But if this process is top down, maybe you're not actually understand their needs and their identities and the way they want to feel that they belong. Maybe they don't want to belong because they are women or they don't need to be support because they are women to feel that they belong, but they need something else. So it's not an easy process, and, but I always suggest this process to be bottom up. So to collect what you have, so the needs that you have, the identities that you have, so that then you create really a place that is also a reflection of your, your employees, your workforce, and so that everyone can be, and, and again, and come back to your values, and so to match your values with then they are like your procedures, your rules, your practice, so that the people can feel that they belong. And this is let's say, a great place where to work because they don't have to be afraid of be what, what they are, who they are or what they want it to be. Yeah, it's uh, not going to the, the base of that. That's not about uh, having diversity, but really creating a safe space to belong, which exactly. is two different things, right? Uh, and some organizations are still in the process uh, fortunately, they started, you know, especially here in the United States, with the events of, uh, that happened last year. Some companies are starting, and okay, let's look at the bright side and say, okay, they are starting. Now, until now, they didn't do it, but it's a start. So um, it's a long journey, even for them, and even for the people in the organization to understand that uh, it's... Um, it's a process that we need to create. Now, it's not immediately as well. Yeah. Wonderful. So the, our final questions, and really like uh, this to be very quick questions, questions and answers in whatever comes to your mind, uh, very easy. Few words uh, uh, from your heart, from what comes to you. Um, so in a few words, belonging for me is? Uh, to be able to shine. So with, with all your, your, your lights and what you are. So to, to, to find a, a place, a space, people where you can shine. Oh, I love that. The best advice that I receive that I'd like to share with others is? Like I receive it through a book. And I, I try to translate the title in English. This is really like um, a, a, a quote that I'm really passionate about and is also like printed somewhere like here in my background. And in Italian is, quando siete felici fateci caso. And in English can be translated like, notice where you're happy. In Italy is the title of a book translated and the book is by Kurt Vonnegut. And it's like, not so life can be hard, but to make sure to find something. Uh, so there's always probably something you can be grateful. And, and when you find these things to be grateful, be happy and grateful. And so, because these like small things, and I think during COVID, we, this was really like evident for all of us, like these right. small things can really make the difference for like, keep us going. Absolutely, great, great reminder. Last one, the world would be a great, a better place if if we will like be able not to fear the diversity around us but to enjoy and wow. be curious yeah. enjoy the diversities love this love this so much love it so much as well <laughs> thank you, you such an inspirational <laughs> thank you so much for sharing for bringing such a, this shining moment here with us, like uh, um, it's such a wonderful experience, like hearing from you, your story and all the work that you are doing. 
like I say, you know, the world needs more Vivianas to bring the <laughs> shine to others. So thank you so much to share here with us. Thank, thank you, thank you so Viviana. I, I really wish you the best with this project. I, I'm a great supporter of the project. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.